I'd like to welcome Associate Professor Sujith Senevaratne from um, Monash in Australia. Um, he's been working with us on the development of this uh, CTFFR um, <coughs> application. So, Sene, please start with your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe, and thank you very much for everyone uh, attending. Um, so, as Chloe said, the format is that I'm going to speak about 20 minutes on the technique, just give some background. And then what we'll do is we'll run a case from the very beginning. So we'll do the, the entire case on the, the workstation here. And then we'll probably do a shorter formats of, um, of further cases with angiographic correlation. Um, so to start, um, just to give you some uh, background, we know that uh, cardiac CT is an excellent anatomical test, and it's got very high negative predictive value. But uh, as we know, as much as uh, anatomy is important, it even more important is, is physiology or ischemia. Um, and fractional flow reserve, or FFR, is the current gold standard for, F, uh, for ischemia, as you know, uh, which measures pressure difference between proximal and distal point of a lesion under maximal hyperemia. And we know that that is really significant because we've clearly shown uh, significant outcome differences with uh, studies such as FAME and others. So how does cardiac CT compare with this gold standard of FFR? Um, if you have a lesion which is less than 50%, uh, according to the studies that we can uh, see here, the chance of that lesion being significant uh, is less than 95%. In other words, you got a lesion which is less than 50% on cardiac CT, you can almost be uh, cer certain that that lesion is not going to be FFR significant. However, if you've got a lesion which is about 50% or more, the chance of that lesion being FFR significant is only about 50%. So it's not much different from uh, tossing a coin. So therefore, we need to do better uh, with cardiac CT. So the, the emphasis is, of course, to uh, not only maintain its high sensitivity, but also to improve its specificity, therefore in, improve outcomes. So in this context, there's been uh, three t techniques which have been developed um, to address this issue. Uh, two of them are based on resting CT. Um, first is uh, CT-derived FFR. Uh, second is transfeminal attenuation gradient, or TAG. So both of these are on rest CT. And thirdly, uh, myocardial uh, perfusion imaging with uh, CT. Now, let us very quickly go through these techniques. So first of these techniques to evolve was uh, CT stress perfusion. Um, the initial work was done by uh, Dr. Rich George uh, from Johns Hopkins. And it's relatively easy to do. It is pretty much repeating your cardiac CT using adenosine or a similar stress agent, and then looking for uh, any ischemia in the myocardium. So in this example, you can see that uh, Unfortunately, my pointer doesn't work, so um, unfortunately, yeah, so these are proximal LAD stenosis in, in um, this particular patient is a 53-year-old female. Um, what you can see on the top left-hand corner is the normal myocardium um, at rest, and below that is under stress. You can see the anterior wall with the sub, um, I mean, uh, uh, so subintimal attenuation um, artifact or um, attenuation uh, defect showing uh, LAD territory ischemia. And Toshiba has also developed software uh, showing similar kind of effect that you can see below. Now, however, uh, this, is actually, uh, this actually requires a repeat study, requires a stress agent, um, can be affected by artifacts, and requires expert interpretation. There have been a number of single center and uh, two multicenter studies done on this topic, and the largest of uh, these was uh, CORE 320. Um, it was compared against SPECT and invasive coronary angiography and showed an area under the curve of 1.87. So pretty decent test. However, as I said, uh, it's got those limitations. The second technique is the transliminal attenuation gradient, or TAG, which is a relatively simple concept, pretty much looking at the drop of Hounsfield unit along the coronary artery. As you can imagine, there, if there is no significant stenosis, the drop in Hounsfield unit uh, along the artery will be pretty small. Therefore, you have a relatively flat gradient. On the other hand, if you have a significant stenosis, you would expect the Hounsfield unit to drop immediately after the stenosis, um, as, is, as you can see in this example, where LAD has a significant amount of calcification, interpretation is difficult, and you can see on the top left uh, corner, there's a significant gradient suggesting that this LAD stenosis was significant. So it sounds very attractive. However, it is, uh, it is not clinically used at the moment because there are still problems with it. In particular, um, the technique very much is dependent on the contrast density in the uh, aortic root and the proximal ascending iota. So this leads us to the third technique, which is FFRCT. This was a concept introduced by a company called Heartflow from US. 
um, and it is basically assessing fractional flow reserve non-invasively using a standard cardiac CT. And the basis of this is what you call computational fluid dynamics. And, and this is the same technique that you use uh, when you assess flow along a river or when you fly airplanes. However, this uh, technique requires that the images to be sent uh, overseas or to the, this particular company for them to actually assess the, the anatomy and then to feed you back with the results. So it requires time, uh, usually 24-hour turnaround time, and of course, it's been a commercial uh, uh, company, uh, there is a cost involved. Now, there's been a number of studies uh, using this technique, and there's been three large multicenter trials, and last of these uh, studies came out in 2014. Um, as you can see uh, from these uh, studies, um, the, the, the beauty of this is that while maintaining its high sensitivity that cardiac CT is known to have, it is able to improve the specificity. Therefore, the area under the curve is significantly improved by applying FFR-CT. So we talked about these three techniques, so why do we need another technique? So as I mentioned before, CT perfusion requires additional CT study. Uh, requiring uh, adenosine or a similar stress agent. Uh, it can be affected by artifacts and requires expert interpretation. TAG or transfemilar attenuation gradient is promising, however it requires further refinement including correction for contrast density in the iota. Now heart flow uh, derived uh, FFRCT appears to have robust data as I showed you. However, images need to be sent away. It needs the use of a supercomputer and is expensive. So this leads us to the the, the main uh, uh, topic today, which is a new uh, uh, CT-derived FFR technique, or Toshiba CT FFR technique. Um, now, I'm going to uh, initially briefly explain this, and we'll look at, look at that in more detail in subsequent slides. So that the difference with this technique is that it requires uh, a seat, cardiac CT to be obtained at rest. However, the exposure window needs to be widened. So rather than a, a standard narrow window, you need uh, exposure of 70 to 99%. And basically what uh, we are looking for is deformation of the coronary arteries and the iota, and that is used to um, calculate boundary conditions and then uh, applying a ready, uh, somewhat uh, simplified uh, computational fluid dynamic mechanism to come up with a similar uh, kind of, uh, similar kind of uh, figure to what uh, heart flow is able to, in other words, be able to provide fractional flow reserve along each vessel. Um, now, uh, unlike Unlike the heart flow model, this can be done on your uh, standard workstation and can be held by your uh, uh, CT technologist and, of course, uh, requires not more than 20 to 30 minutes to do. So that's the, the beauty of it. So to talk about the acquisition protocol, as I mentioned before, this is a standard REST CT. Uh, only difference being that it's a widened uh, exposure window, 70 to 99%, um, and the radiation dose obviously going to be uh, somewhat higher. Um, under optimal conditions, of course, it's a pretty small dose of uh, radiation, and of course, with the improvement in CD technology, we would expect it to come down further. So how does the workflow uh, go through? So as I mentioned, once, once this uh, widened window is obtained, then there are four diastolic phases being reconstructed uh, by the, uh, the software, and basically you you use um, the software to edit contours. So that is the rate limiting step here. So to be able to correctly identify the center line and adjust the, the center line. Um, that can take up to 20 minutes or so uh, in more difficult cases. Once that is done, um, the, the single phase that you've adjusted is propagated into other three phases. And then subsequently FFR is uh, computed, which is a pretty uh, quick process as you will see shortly. So finally, the, 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 you're able to actually get FFR values along each vessel in about 20 to 30 minutes time. So the next few minutes, I'm going to talk uh, briefly about uh, principles of uh, CT-derived FFR techniques, and then to compare the, the two different, different techniques, the Toshiba CT-FFR versus the FFR-CT or heart flow model. So there are three broad principles in uh, uh, CT-derived FFR techniques. First is to obtain anatomical modeling uh, based on the CT data that you obtained. Uh, second is to um, identify boundary conditions using uh, mathematical calculations. And finally, uh, to apply uh, computational fluid dynamics or numerical solution to be able to come up with pressure and flow, and therefore fractional flow reserve. So let us uh, briefly go through these three steps uh, using these two different techniques. With uh, heart flow um, FFR-CT, it's a very time-consuming process. It requires uh, sub analysis. The entire quarry tree is mapped. 
uh, with significant human input, and therefore requires significant amount of time. Um, with the CTFFR, uh, with the Toshiba technique, the three major vessels are analyzed, uh, extending up to a distal diameter of 1.8 millimeters. Um, and of course, it also requires uh, adjustment of the center line, and of course, it is the rate limiting step, how it is uh, significantly less time consuming compared to FFR CT. While the anatomical model is, is different, the boundary conditions and the numerical solution, the step and two, uh, step two and three, are even more different. Uh, in the heart flow model, it is a, uh, for the boundary condition, it's a combination of uh, vessel diameter, uh, myocardium, and some assumptions uh, on microvascular resistance under maximum hyperemia. Whereas uh, in the CTFFR technique with uh, Toshiba, uh, basically what we're looking at is deformation or, or vessel area changes in coronary arteries and also in iota across the diastole. And um, also some assumptions, uh, other assum assumptions being made, and this uh, leads to boundary conditions uh, being derived. And boundary conditions, of course, refer to a combination of cardiac output, um, uh, aortic pressure, uh, coronary outlet uh, pressure and flow, um, and microvascular resistance. Now, finally, the computational fluid dynamic part, or the numerical solution, is also different, as I mentioned before. Um, with the uh, heart for FFRCT, it's a three-dimensional model, and uh, a mesh is created, and you're able to calculate FFRCT along any point in uh, in this uh, mesh. Um, whereas in the, the Toshiba CTFFR is a, a simplified uh, model, it's a single dimension as opposed to three dimension, and FFR value is obtained uh, along each cross section of a coronary artery. Now this difference allows um, the values to be derived at a much faster rate, or at much, a much shorter time period uh, than hard flow solution. So what evidence uh, we have for this, uh, this is paper uh, just been accepted in Jack Imaging, and, and Dr. Brian Coe is the, the lead investigator for this particular study, and this was done at uh, Monash. Um, it's 42 patients uh, who were enrolled for invasive angiography for suspected coronary artery disease, and the gold standard uh, was fractional flow reserve. Um, now, there were 12 patients who were used as a derivation cohort, and 30 patients uh, used for validation cohort, including 58 vessels. To maintain the integrity of the, of the study, we used three different uh, sources. Uh, the cardiac CT analysis was done uh, in Japan, uh, Jintendo Hospital. FFR analysis was done uh, at uh, Monash, our center. And then uh, at Toshiba, uh, Japan, uh, did the analysis of CTFFR. And finally, all three results were brought together uh, to maintain the, the integrity of the study. Uh, this is the derivation cohort. I won't go into detail with the area under the curve of 0.87. And these are the results of the validation cohort with uh, 56 vessels. Uh, what you can see here is that uh, the sensitivity with cardiac CT uh, is around 77, uh, sorry, 78% or 79%. And the sensitivity is maintained when you apply the CTFFR technique uh, with around 78%. However, the difference, of course, is that, as one would expect, the specificity has gone up uh, from about 74% up to 87%. Um, as a result, um, the area under the curve uh, goes up from 0.77 with CT uh, to 0.88 on CTFFR. Now, this is not statistically significant, but it's most likely because of the relatively small sample size. Now, of course, as one would expect, there is a, a, a higher radiation dose, which is 4.7 millisieverts. However, this study also included a calcium score, which is not exactly required uh, for this particular technique. Now, what about time taken for this technique? The mean uh, per patient time required for CT was about 27 minutes. It has excellent intra uh, and inter-observer variability. Therefore, the, study is, uh, the technique is highly reproducible. What about the limitations? Of course, as I mentioned before, it's a single center study uh, with a relatively small sample size. Um, we haven't got information on lesion, different lesion subsets. Therefore, in particular, effect uh, of uh, calcification or graphs or, uh, or stents, they're not available. Um, this technique requires a change of acquisition protocol, uh, so uh, 799. Therefore, as I mentioned, there is a slightly higher radiation dose involved. Um, currently, the, the data available to us is only applicable to Toshiba Aquilian 1. So let us uh, go through a couple of examples. So this is a 49-year-old man with uh, chest pain. As you can see on the images here, a patient has got uh, sort of 60 to 70% or moderate proximal to mid-LAD stenosis. And what you can see on the, the left is the output. 
um, with a CTFFR value of 0.64 and invasive CAT uh, value of 0.61. Another example, again, involving LAD, again, in the sort of uh, mid-LAD territory, uh, again, sort of moderate to severe uh, stenosis uh, with an FFR value in basically of 0.74 and a CTFFR value of 0.73. So in conclusion, uh, Toshiba CTFFR is an ex uh, exciting new technique which uses both computation fluid dynamics as well as structural data uh, to assess functionally significant uh, coronary stenosis identified on cardiac CT. And the main difference is that images need to be acquired using a window width of 70 to 99%. It requires no images to be sent away and requires only minimal input uh, from the user. Uh, it can be performed by the reader or can be by the technologist uh, on a standard workstation. It requires no specific training uh, for interpretation and is highly reproducible and takes 20 to 30 minutes to do. However, uh, given it's a relatively small study, of course we need larger multicenter multi prospective studies to establish its uh, real value. And uh, before we go on to uh, our cases, I'm, um, I'm very grateful to a number of people mentioned in these slides, in particular Dr. Banco who was the main uh, author and lead investigator of this study. And uh, of course, a number of our colleagues from uh, Japan who had a huge input into the development of this technique.